Hey, what's going on guys? It's Preston here. Welcome to another Call of Duty Advanced Warfare video. Today, I've got for you guys my best gameplay to date in Advanced Warfare. It's on the map Instinct. It's a 70 and 8 kill gameplay. Super, super hype. Although it is domination, I had, this is the closest I've ever gotten to 100 plus. I definitely think 100 plus can happen if I have assault score streaks on. You can see right now, all I have is a UAV score streak on, and the only uh, you know customized thing I have to the perk is Scrambler. Um, so, you know, I didn't really have anything that would do major damage or at least kill for me while I was also killing. I think if I had, like, you know, the autopiloted Warbird or something like that on, I might have been able to pull off, you know, an 80-90 kill gameplay, maybe 100 if I was lucky. But the first half of this game, I was playing so hot and heavy for the DNA bomb, it was insane. It's a 25-gun streak, and then I unfortunately pass. It was very, very sad. So if you guys are enjoying the Advanced Warfare videos and you would like to continue seeing more, subscribe down below and hit that like button. It only takes a second and I appreciate it very, very much. So we are running the bow. And now I was really against this gun for some reason during the first couple of days of launch, but the more and more I've been using it, the more and more I actually really like it. Now there are a lot of assault rifles I've been testing with and I gotta say I like them almost as equally as much, but for some reason me and the bow just started clicking. You know what I'm saying? Like, we just, it, don't be fudging with my click, man. Like, this gun is it for me. And I don't know why. So the three perks I'm running on this is, uh, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm straight on this one, but I believe it is foregrip, suppressor, and laser sight. I know for a fact that it's laser sight and suppressor. Now, for the third one, I do not believe it is quick draw, although I highly recommend quick draw. I just didn't have it unlocked, I don't believe, at the time. Or maybe I did, but I just forgot to equip it. But I believe it was foregrip, which increases the accuracy instead of the, you know, aim down the sight quickness. So, I would personally go with, like, stock or quick draw. I think quick draw is necessary. I think quick draw and stock are honestly two of the most necessary things in this game. And you can see right here, two minutes into the game, I'm already on a 15 gun streak, which is crazy. Absolute hype. And then also, for the perks, I'm running lightweight, fast hand, scavenger, and blast suppressor. Blast suppressor absolute must on every single class i cannot stand the fact that anybody knows where i am on the map every time i use my exosuit and you use your exosuit in this game every second if not like every two seconds it's insane unless you want to play this game you know just running around like a normal call of duty and be at a huge disadvantage i, I personally don't want that so <laughs> i recommend putting on blast suppressor and um, scavenger too. I mean, obviously, like, I don't want to be picking up a bunch of guns in the meantime. Not to mention, if you do double tap the reload button, you lose whatever left is in your clip. So, you know, you run out of ammo even quicker, but you, you know, you're able to reload quicker. So that is actually a really nice feature about Advanced Warfare. But as you can see right here, like, look at that. Like, I'm already running super low on ammo. Like, super low. But I'm running relentless. Three, what is this? Three minutes in the game on a 20 gun streak. This game was going all the hype for me. I was so ready to get the DNA bomb. And I don't even want to speak because, like, it just gets crazy. Like, those intense moments right there, I don't have toughness on. So already in, like, you know, in 1v1 gunfights, I'm already at a disadvantage. And I cannot tell you guys how many times I get lucky here. But then, here's the bad thing. The teammates took, or the, uh, the enemies took A and B, which are the two flags that I think you always want to have. Because that leaves me spawn trapped at C. As you can see right here, I'm in a terrible position. There's not a whole lot I can do. We finally managed to cap A. But something inside me tells me, don't go to A, Preston, because they're all over there. And sure enough, they were. And then, boom, right here, three and a half minutes in the game, I die. 25 and 0. Because it's just, the spawns are just so crazy. They're very similar to ghost spawns. They don't really make a lot of sense. I mean, I'm sure there's some things I could have done in that situation to survive. But, of course, like, in the heat of the moment, when you're in a 25 gun streak, you're not thinking a whole lot about, you know... You're, you, there's some things you're going to be skipping out on. Of course you're thinking like, yo, I got to survive. I got to get this DNA bomb. But I wasn't thinking as clearly as I should have, should I say. I don't really know what I could have done in that situation. Maybe because I didn't want to go towards B because I know that's where they were spawning at. And then that little A line where you could go, you know, you can run across. You always get picked. I've never not, like, died running down this lane where I'm looking at right here. Every time I run down that lane, I die. So I didn't really want to do, I didn't want to take the chances, and then who knows, man, maybe I could have survived. I thought I just had a better chance at C at the tractor, and what I should have done is I should have gotten right here on the tractor wheel. It's a great spot for picking people down A, and then also staying protected from people who are trying to pick you just like that, who stand up here and snipe. And speaking of which, there were a lot of snipers in this gameplay that was on the enemy team, and that probably helped me end up getting this score. So I'm not gonna, you know, think I'm not the best player by far. And I did have a really lucky gameplay where there were a lot of snipers on the enemy team. And then also there were just some situations where I got stupid lucky in my gunfights, as you guys saw earlier, when the guy jumped on me and just sprayed around everywhere and didn't hit me. Um, so anyways, from my exo ability, I love exo stim 
because Exosim is just great. Because like if you know you're about to be in a really crappy situation, you could pop that and there's a really good chance you're gonna survive. I can't tell you guys how many times I've walked up to a guy and meleeed him, but he didn't die because he just popped his stim ability. It's incredibly useful and it's really all about timing with it because it runs out so fast unless you have the perk and uh, the tier one slot, which allows it to last a little bit longer. I forget which one it's called, but it also allows you to concuss enemies when you do your foot stomp thing. That's a really good perk to run too. I just didn't have it unlocked at the time of this video. I recommend running that. Now, Fast Hands is what I find to be the ultimate perk that was just made for me. I'm a run and gunner. I love playing aggressive, and I love taking on multiple enemies at once. But one thing I hate is how my reloading gets like delayed or like you know the animation gets canceled because I sprint or because I do my exo movements or whatever it is fast hands is just awesome because it allows for like the least amount of delay and everything and I think it delays or I think it uh I think it increases the speed at which you do your exo ability. I could be wrong about that. You know, the little animation where you pop up your wristwatch and press the button to activate the ability. But it does help you throw simtexes faster, reload faster, reload while sprinting, and all that jazz. That's why I absolutely love it. And then Lightweight's just a great perk in general because I like moving fast. Things that make me faster in Call of Duty tend to help me to stay alive more. I think it's because of my play style. And I have had to adjust myself, I've noticed this. I've had to adjust my play style a lot in Advanced Warfare. I'm not nearly as rushy or as aggressive as I used to be because you just can't. I mean, you can rush around in this game, but you really have to stay to like the outside of the map. You can't always stay towards the inner of the map. If you do, it's just such a good chance you're gonna die. Unless you have like some really good friends that you're playing with who you know are gonna have your back and are not gonna you know, end up screwing you over and just completely avoiding the kills. I can't tell you guys, how many times I've been in a situation in Advanced Warfare where I think my teammates have my back because there's like two of them and an enemy will just run past both of them and kill me when I'm on the streak. It's like the most ridiculous thing because you're just like, guys, could, could you just, could you really not? And then there's situations like that where I'm like already 10 feet in the air but somehow his fist still connects on me. And I think that's just like a connection based issue. If Advanced Warfare had dedicated servers, I think this game would be the best Call of Duty to date. Like, I mean, I know COD 4 was really good and it was amazing, but it's old, it served its purpose, it's out. But I really do think if this game had or if this game did have dedicated servers, people would have so much more fun with it. Like, just so, so much more fun because I find that a lot of times if you use your exosuit, it actually hurts you in a gunfight. It depends on the connection. Like, if you have, like, kind of, like, an okay connection, if you use your exosuit to, like, boost away, I really feel like the game doesn't even register that on the enemy's screen that's shooting at you that you boosted away. It still, like, feels like he's shooting me in one spot. Like, I'll be doing, like, 360s around this guy, but he still has perfect aim on me. And, you know, it's just, that's really hard to do. And you can see here, I get on, like, two separate mercilesses in this game. I just, I was streaking like crazy in this game. I was just on point. And the enemy were, like, some of them were hating on me. And I had one guy in the enemy team, he was, like, defending me. He's like, no, bro, I just don't hate on good players. And then I think a couple of these guys thought I was cheating. And you can see, like, I think I capped once in this game or twice. But I did have nine defense. And so, like, a lot of people will probably get on that for me. But the thing is, you really don't need a lot of captures if you're able to have the most defense on the team. Because if you have the most defense, then you're defending flags that are already captured. So there's, what's the point in capturing flags if you're defending flags that you've already captured? You know what I'm saying? So that is my logic behind playing really aggressive. Because I can switch between flags that our teammates are already captured, and then I can defend those. And it gives me defend points and vanguard points and all that good stuff like that, which helps me rank up quicker. And then, just in general, it makes me feel better about objective-based gameplay. Because Slayers do play a role in objective-based games, believe it or not. Now, if if you're not a great, you know, slayer, then that's why I think a lot of people tend to, you know, stick to the objective. Because if you just can't slay people, then at least being on the objective, you know you're useful in the game. And I, and I typically take the slayer position. A lot of the times, though, in my games, if I just think I'm not streaking or not doing well, I will switch to be an objective player because it just makes me feel better about myself. And then plus I want to rank up. And you can just see right here, man, the battle 25 is just so hype. Like, sometimes I don't understand how does it do so well. Like, did God magically give it a kiss or something like that and just make it one of the best weapons in Advanced Warfare? Now, I don't know which weapon I like just yet more. It's either this weapon or the HBRA-3. Those two assault rifles and the IM no I am Narwhal, the IMR are my three favorite right now. I really can't decide which one's the best, but the battle is quickly growing on me at a very fast paced rate. So I guarantee you, if you go try this class setup and you don't end up getting on some kind of streak, then come back, just come back to the channel and, un and unsubscribe. You know, don't really, but just come back and unsubscribe. You know what I'm saying? If you want to blame someone, blame it on me. 
I just don't see how, and then right here, man, I was freaking out, because I was like, I know I'm super close to the 70 bomb, and those last two kills helped me drop the 70 bomb. I know one of these days, I'm going to get that 100 bomb for you guys, and it's going to be awesome. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Take care, and I'll see you dudes later. Peace out, everybody.